A trailblazer and legend, 10, SM Entertainment's first Southeast Asian idol, has not only broken the mold for non-Far East Asian K-pop idols, but has over the years proved the power of talent, hard work, and establishing a unique identity as an artist. Fluent in four languages, 10 is a multi-talented artist who has since his debut with NCTU in 2016, captivated fans around the world and become a flagship artist of SM Entertainment. An all-rounder ace, in addition to his distinctive siren-like vocals and impressive melodic rapping, Ten is widely considered one of the best dancers in K-pop, along with fellow SM icons like Shiny's Taemin and EXO's Kai. Most recently, the release of Ten's all-English first solo album has set end citizens and general K-pop fans alike abuzz. In this video, we'll be taking a look back at Ten's roller coaster journey from pre-debut to the launch of his solo career, explaining why he is truly a gem in the K-pop industry, a solid 10 out of 10, and the epitome of an all-rounder idol. And lastly, we'll dive into the masterpiece that is his new self-titled album. So if you're ready, let's get into it. I'm saying I, I don't wanna come down from your Hey guys, it's Pre Season E. If you're new to my channel, welcome and welcome back if you're a returning subscriber. If you're a fan of my content, you most likely know that I'm a huge fan of SM's boy group NCT. In fact, their affectionate fandom nickname, Season E, even inspired the name of my channel. It's also no secret that Ten is not only one of my biases in the group, but also one of my ultimate biases in K pop. So it's no surprise that I've been patiently waiting for the release of his solo album, Ten, the first mini album. Now that Ten's solo debut album is finally here, I figured this would be the perfect moment to dive into Ten's winding journey of becoming one of SM's quintessential all-rounder idols and take a look at his self-titled album inspecting Ten's vision of the project and reviewing each of the six tracks. So whether you're a certified end citizen, Weishini, a dedicated lovely, or you're new to NCT's Ten, this is the perfect video for you. Before we get into all things Ten, I want to take a moment to thank all of my channel members, Night Skin Nihonjin, Alice Loves Cherry, Louisa, Kaylin Caster, The Rose of NCT, Vermilion, and Misa Lee. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. Ten was born on February 27, 1996, and raised in Thailand's capital city, Bangkok. Born Chitapolni Chaya Pornkul, the name Ten, which means a common Indian kingfisher in Thai, was actually a nickname that his aunt gave to him when he was little. Ten was raised in a Thai Chinese family and attended the British International School, the Shrewsbury International School of Bangkok. In addition to teaching English, the school is also known for its art program, where Ten studied design for over 10 years, as well as gymnastics, for which Ten won several medals and even a trophy. The the fact that Ten attended such a prestigious art school makes a lot of sense. If you're a fan of Ten's, you'd know that he frequently shares his artwork on his social media and has even designed his own clothing collection featuring his art in a collaboration with Brand Represent. Discussing his childhood on the YouTube channel ODG, Ten shared, when I was young, we just played baseball or volleyball. Sometimes I went to the beach with my friends and we just sit on the sand and play in it. My school was next to the river. So after school, we rode the boats and ate food. It was really fun back in the days. Every time I see old photos, I wanna ride a time machine and go back. I was so free back then. Ten loved singing and dancing since he was young. He has explained that both his mother and grandmother greatly influenced his choice to pursue becoming an idol. According to Ten, his mother, who some fans affectionately refer referred to as Mama Lee, introduced him to the world of art and design. She believed the arts and sports were far more important in a child's development than traditional academia. In addition, Ten's grandmother often showed him performances of artists since he was a child, which also inspired him to take an interest in dancing. When Ten was 15 years old, he competed and eventually won the Thai talent show Teen Superstar under the stage name TNT, sporting a head full of dramatically bright red hair. As part of the show's prize, Ten won a contract with the K-pop company Starship Entertainment. However, his parents weren't ready for him to fly to Korea by himself since he was still very young, so he decided to stay in Thailand for the time being. Imagine if he'd signed with Starship, we could have seen Ten as a member of Monsta X. Remember Ten's 2020 NBC pop star performance with Monsta X's Shonu? That was a taste of what could have been. 
Two years later, Ten auditioned for SM Entertainment and passed the SM Global Audition. Although his family was still hesitant about sending their teenage son so far away, they supported his passion wholeheartedly, so Ten boarded a plane headed for Seoul and joined SM. In an episode of My Neighbor Charles, which told the story of Ten's journey, Ten's mother expressed her feelings about sending Ten to Korea to pursue his dreams. When he first told me he's going to Korea, I thought about it a lot. I was shocked. My child's 17. He's only been with me for 17 years and he's leaving. However, it's up to him to choose for himself because we're just his parents. He's the only one who can decide which path to take. In an interview with Thai TV host Woody Melinda Chinda, Ten shared, moving from Thailand to Korea, he felt his whole world change as he adjusted to the strict trainee system. Ten said of the experience, if you already decided, no matter how tiring it is, you just go for it. I'm a person that if I decided that I'm going to do it, I won't look back. By December 2013, Ten was officially introduced as a member of SM Rookies, SM Entertainment's pre-debut trainees. Although Southeast Asian artists debuting as K-pop idols has become more and more common in recent years with idols such as Blackpink's Lisa, GOT7's Bam Bam, and idols many coming to mind, when Ten was initially announced as a member of SM Rookies, he was one of the first non-Far East Asian stars to enter the Korean public consciousness. As one of the first Southeast Asian idols, Ten faced several challenges, including the tough language barrier, brutal online scrutiny, extreme cultural differences, and the pressure to represent where he comes from. A lot for a teenager who is new to a country. Although Korean people have throughout the years been exposed to sensationalized media that reinforces negative stereotypes of Southeast Asian countries and people as being less developed, thanks to K-pop idols like Ten, there has been a noticeable difference throughout the last few years. Seksan Anantasiri Kiat, an analyst with Klangpanya Institute for National Strategies in Bangkok, told UPI Korean, K Entertainment plays a very important role in shaping positive perception of Thai people in Korea. Overall, the positive perception of Hallyu can continues to increase, and there is a tendency that the influence of Hallyu will become stronger. So now that we've covered Ten's road to joining SM Entertainment, let's discuss his debut in NCT. Introduced as a member of SM Rookies, it was only a matter of time before Ten was confirmed to debut in a group. After over two years, on the 3rd of April 2016, SM Entertainment finally announced that Ten, going by the Korean name Ten Lee, was an official member of NCTU, the first rotating subunit of their brand new boy group with an unlimited concept, NCT. Along with Jaehyun, Mark, Taeyong, and Doyoung, NCTU released what is now considered one of the best K-pop debut songs of all time. The Seventh Sense. Open your eyes, each and open your eyes. Each and open your eyes. The Seventh Sense is a bass-driven hip-hop track with punchy verses, layered harmonized vocals, and ominous lyrics that seem to hint towards an existential crisis and being stuck within a dream. The title track featured intricate and extremely difficult choreography, which NCTU executed flawlessly, even though they were a rookie group, with Ten shining not only during his rap verse, but also as the center in multiple parts of the choreography in both the official music video and performance video. The Seventh Sense, with its minimal, stripped-down approach, rap-oriented focus, and lack of some of the bells and whistles that are often associated with K-pop production was a daring venture for SM at the time, especially to release as a debut title track and the reception was mixed. But years later, now the track is hailed not only as one of NCT's most known tracks, but also as a cult classic amongst K-pop fans. After his debut in NCTU, Ten participated in the dance competition show Hit the Stage alongside idols like Hyoyeon of Girls' Generation, Shinee's Taemin, Got7 Yu Gyeom and Momo of Twice, just three months after his debut. However, despite his popularity, insane stage charisma, and performance skills, when it came time to decide the members of NCT's first two permanent units, 127 and Dream, Ten was noticeably absent from the final lineups, and at the time, many fans wondered why. However, in early 2017, fans were shocked to learn that Ten had undergone knee surgery due to a chronic knee injury. SM had remained completely silent on the issue, and fans only learned the news once photos surfaced online of Ten in Thailand in a wheelchair. Ten had returned home to Thailand in March of 2017 to postpone his mandatory military service because of his surgery and need to recover. 
However, he was ultimately exempted from service due to the injury and surgery. I can only imagine how tough and scary this must have been for Ten as a dancer. He had finally debuted in NCT, but shortly after had to take a short hiatus to stop doing what he loved and put his dream on hold while his other members continued on. At the same time, many concerned fans also wondered if Ten would ever be able to dance again. Ten recently discussed his injury and the impact it had on him in an episode of My Neighbor Charles. I really couldn't see my future back then. They told me if the injury gets worse, you can't do any activities at all, and I had a lot of stress. I thought, wow, if I can't dance, then what should I do now? So I tried my best, went to the company every day, and practiced singing without thinking about others. I kept practicing high notes every day. I think it's very admirable and speaks to Ten's character that he took such a stressful chapter in his life and used it as a time to better himself, despite the circumstances. It takes a lot of inner strength to push on, persevere, and keep working hard when it seems like your future is bleak. In the same episode, Ten also expressed how grateful he is to the other members of Wavy, who encouraged him during such a dark time. I met the Wavy members for the first time during my hiatus due to my knee injury. It felt like they were rays of sunshine in the darkness. The kids, Wavy, all have bright personalities, so they really helped me a lot when I had a hard time. They said, after the hardships, as long as you don't give up and do your best, your efforts will pay off. I think I'm grateful for those times now. In April of 2017, while Ten was still on hiatus and in recovery, he released his first solo song, Dream in a Dream, which is one of my favorite K-pop songs of all time. I'm saying I don't wanna come down from your Dream in a Dream was very well received. An ethereal track with a dreamy and nuanced soundscape, traditional East Asian instruments, alluring vocals, lyrics telling the story of not wanting to wake up from the dream that is falling in love, breathtakingly beautiful choreography, and a both touching and surreal music video that showcased Ten's delicate dance skills and magnetic stage charisma, proving his competence as one of SM's flagship main dancers. About releasing Dream in a Dream, Ten told Teen Vogue, I realized why all the young sometimes like doing their own stuff. It's because you're putting your ideas in your own work. Dream in a Dream also made its way into NCTU's first studio album, NCT 2018 Empathy, which also included Ten's duet song with Taeyong, Baby Don't Stop, which is undeniably one of the most popular NCT songs of all time and has continued to be a fan favorite to this day. Stop. A dangerously flirtatious, bass-driven track decorated with catchy synths, robust percussive elements, Ten's honey-like vocals, and Taeyong's charismatic rapping. I've been lucky enough to see Ten and Taeyong perform Baby Don't Stop in person twice, once during Super M's tour and the second time last year at KCON. Each time, the crowd absolutely went crazy. In 2018, Ten had fully recovered and released his second solo single, New Heroes a moving EDM track with inspiring lyrics telling the story of perseverance. Ten debuted New Heroes at the SM Town Live World Tour concert in Dubai, and without any promotion, the track impressively peaked at number four on the Billboard World Digital Song Sales, proving how powerful Ten had become as a solo artist. With no word from SM on when Ten would be debuting in a permanent group, through his solo music, Ten started building his identity as an artist. Cat-like visuals, smoldering stage presence, clear enchanting vocals, unreal dancing skills, and the masterful ability to adapt to any genre. Ten's unique brand kept people talking about him, despite his seemingly endless hiatus. Ten was showing that he was a star through countless SM Station solo releases, even if SM wouldn't give him a group yet. Finally, after three years without a permanent unit, on the last day of 2018, SM announced that Ten would be joining NCT's new China-based unit, Wavy. In the group, Ten would be joining Kun, Winwin, Hendry, Xiaojun, Yang Yang, and former member Lucas. Together, they would be managed by SM's brand new subsidiary, Label V. In a heartfelt letter to fans shortly after Wavy's debut, Ten addressed his surgery and hiatus, his love for the art of dance and performance, and thanked his fans for believing in him. Hey guys, do you still remember the letter I wrote in 2016? The time I had by myself helped me to understand more about my identity and my love for all forms of art. 
Performing on stage again alongside Wavy is the greatest experience for me. On the stage is where I can express my creativity, also a perfect place where we share what we have in common and come to understand and accept our differences. I'm sincerely grateful to be a part of Wavy and I would like to express my gratitude for everyone for believing in me and patiently waiting for me for such a long period of time. Although SM had been toying with C-pop for a long time, Wavy was their first official China-based group and it was clear that the company had high hopes that they would be able to, at long last, tap into the cash cow that is China's 2 billion consumers, despite China's unspoken K-pop ban. To explain, China's K-pop ban is a campaign on the Chinese mainland to deliberately keep Korean artists and companies out of the country to further their local entertainment industry. BTS's Suga said of the ban, I can't perform in China. I've seen instances where Chinese members are allowed to work in China, but the K-pop group itself is not allowed. And even if K-pop artists were able to work in China in the last three years, Chinese and Korean relations have seriously soured, which has also affected Korea's reputation among potential Chinese K-pop fans. Cedar Bo Seiji, an author and assistant professor of Korean and East Asian studies at Busan National University said of the situation, China is a huge market for K-pop and Korean cultural products, but the THAAD controversy when South Korea opposed China installing missiles on a US military base in Korea, and consequent issues between the two countries have severely curtailed the growth of sales in the Chinese market. However, with several Chinese K-pop idols moving back to China after finding success in Korea, SM Entertainment dove into Wavy, and for the most part, the unit was a success. Wavy, short for Weishin V, debuted on January 17th, 2019, with the release of the EP The Vision, with the Mandarin version of NCT 127's Regular as the title track. <laughs> In addition to having a successful debut, the Wavy members have been able to persevere after the scandal and hiatus that surrounded former member Lucas from late 2021 until he ultimately left the group in May of 2023. Since the group's inception, Wavy has undoubtedly made its mark in 4th gen K-pop. For example, every K-pop stan knows the undeniable number one K-pop thought anthem, Love Talk. Am I right? I can hear it calling from where you are, loving the way you want to talk. In addition, Wavy has released hits like Moonwalk, Bad Alive, Take Off, Kick Back, and Phantom. The group's most recent album, On My Youth, their first full-length album since the controversy, achieved the group's highest first-week sales and was certified platinum by the Korea Music Content Association. Ten also participated in the creation of On My Youth's choreography. In addition to being a member of Wavy, in August of 2019, Ten was suddenly announced to be joining SM Entertainment's supergroup, Super M, the Avengers of K-pop, along with Taemin of Shiny, EXO's Big Yun and Kai, as well as fellow NCT members Taeyong, Mark, and Lucas. A K-pop supergroup co-created by Capitol Records, Super M was marketed specifically at the American markets, which meant sending the members to every American talk show and radio program, plus sending them on a short but profitable world tour, which included playing the UK's O2 Arena. Super M even became the official ambassadors for Korean Air. SM's promotion worked, and Super M's first album became the first Asian debut record to top the Billboard 200. At the same time, in 2019, Ten start on the Thai cooking program Food Truck Battle, which featured a mix of Korean and Thai celebrities, including Nam Tae Hyun, Wonder Girls Park Yoon, Kitty Chika, and James Tiradon. Ten even returned for season two, appearing alongside Yang Yang and Woods. What's more, Ten has become a regular in the world of Chinese dance survival programs, with his first appearance being as a surprise special guest on Street Dance of China, which was then followed up by Ten being cast as a team leader on Great Dance Crew which is sort of China's version of Street Woman Fighter. In fact, Ten is currently one of the mentors of Chuang Asia Thailand, a Thai spin-off of the Produce 101 China franchise alongside Jackson of GOT7. Ten also released the playful summer banger Lolo with fellow Wavy member Yang Yang in 2021 and has participated in all of the cohesive NCT U albums since his debut. Ten was part of the lineup for both title tracks of the NCT U Resonance Part 2 album in 2020. The nostalgic hip-hop track 90s Love with fellow members Jenna, Win Win Mark, Song Chan, and Hit Chan, as well as the groovy, energetic synth heavy EDM track Work It with members Johnny, Yuta, Jungwoo, Hendry, Jamin, and Jisung. In addition, Ten and the legendary The Seventh Sense NCT unit members reunited in 2023 for the NCT U Golden Age album, starring in the irresistibly catchy, braggadocious title track Baggy Jeans. Hello,
In my baggy, 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 baggy jeans. In my baggy, 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 baggy. Ten also teamed up once again with fellow main slayer NCT leader Taeyong, a nod to Baby Don't Stop, with the seductive Golden Age B side called D. So now that we've detailed Ten's extensive journey of becoming an idol and one of the pillars of NCT, it's time to get into the highly anticipated creation and release of his self-titled first solo mini album, Ten. By now, you must be wondering how Ten has any time to release solo music. But despite being busy as a member of Wavy, Super M, as well as every dance survival program known to man, Ten has consistently released solo projects, including the English SM Station and NCT Lab tracks Paint Me Naked and Birthday. So tell me what you wanna take it. I'm your figure, you could paint me naked like a feet. Every second, every minute, make me wanna celebrate. Both of these tracks show that Ten Lee is truly a chameleon of an artist. He can effortlessly adapt and own various genres and styles of music and dance. Paint Me Naked is an energetic pop-punk-centric track with catchy guitar riffs, while Birthday is an alluring R&B dance track that highlights Ten's beautiful falsetto, enticing vocals, and baffling dancing. These two songs further establish Ten's adaptive music style, emphasizing his charming and beautiful vocals, while their groovy and dynamic production beautifully complemented his incredible dance ability. But the best was yet to come. When SM Entertainment's CEO Chris Lee announced their plans to finally release Tan's first fully English album in February of this year, after it was initially postponed from its original June 2023 date, fans were thrilled. Finally, Ten was getting what he deserved. His talent was being respected for what it was. However, some questioned why SM scheduled Ten's solo debut to coincide with the debut of NCT's brand new unit, NCT Wish, as well as NCT leader Taeyong's anticipated second solo release, Tap. Couldn't SM find a time to release Ten's album when it wouldn't have so much competition from his group members? Personally, I ult both Taeyong and Ten, and this situation did frustrate me quite a bit. The schedule planning seemed quite rushed and messy. While I totally understand that Taeyong is enlisting soon, probably later this year, and his time frame to release a new project was probably limited, as a fan of both idols, I feel that both Taeyong and Ten deserved to have their singular moments in time to shine and promote their solo projects, especially Ten since this would be his solo debut. However, despite the timing, most Ten citizens like myself were just relieved and excited that we were finally getting a long-awaited complete Ten solo project after waiting for years, despite the circumstances. In the video 10, story of the first mini album 10, uploaded to the official NCT YouTube channel, Ten speaks candidly about the process of bringing his debut album to life. He explains that each of the six songs reflects an aspect of his personality. Although the album is called Ten, each track can stand alone. Ten also added that he tried to express an alter ego or another side of himself in each song. Nightwalker is the album's title track, and Ten explained that it wasn't the first choice for the title track, but it was decided after his team took a vote. He also added that his first impression upon hearing the demo was that the song would be very difficult for him to record due to the prevalence of many high notes. Ten described Nightwalker as having more of a relaxing vibe when compared to his last single release, Birthday, which was intense from start to finish. According to Ten, Nightwalker is about a seductive character that has the power to hypnotize people, which is also reflected in the song's music video. That's why the highlight dance move involves swaying my hand as if hypnotizing someone. I tried to sing like acting when recording, because in the music video, you can see that I am a researcher working at a lab who turns into a monster when the clock hits midnight. Starting with an intro that sonically mimics a nighttime soundscape, Nightwalker is an enchanting dance track with psytrance elements. The groovy bass guitar is the song's driving force, with catchy guitar strums and tremolos, a flourish of industrial synths, stylistic vocal distortion, a breathtaking anti-drop before the chorus, and Ten's enchanting falsetto. There's an instrumental section after the second verse in which there's a dance break with Ten at the center. It should be noted that the choreography for Nightwalker is exceptional. Sergio Reyes, who also worked on the choreography for queer Australian pop star Troy Sivan's Rush and Got Me Started, worked on the choreography for Nightwalker. And 
then Ten and his choreography team made their additions and changes, including the tutting sequence during the dance break, which was Ten's creation. When asked about working with Sergio, Ten stated, When I first listened to Nightwalker, he's the name that popped up when I was thinking about choreography. I used to find his videos on Instagram and I feel like it's very, very unique. All the dances are simple, but they captivate the audience when you look at his movement. When asked further about the choreography, Ten explained, I originally crafted choreography with intricate and powerful moves for the chorus, but this time I integrated simpler and repetitive choreography to convey a different allure. As mentioned before, Nightwalker's dance break features Tutting, named after the ancient Egyptian pharaoh King Tut, a street dance style birthed in the 90s that focuses on the angular movements of the fingers. If you're a Revelove, you might remember Soli and Irene featuring this dance style in the choreography for their 2020 B-side, Naughty. Tutting is an extremely intricate and precise dance style that isn't easy to execute and Ten nailed it effortlessly in Nightwalker. This section of the choreo as well as the outro dance break is the highlight of the track for me. In my opinion, Nightwalker was the perfect title track for Ten's solo debut. Although I expected Ten to go with a hip-hop or R&B song for his title track, I think he instead wanted to go with the unexpected and I'm so glad he did. Nightwalker not only showcases Ten Ten's flawless precision as a dancer, but also highlights his vocal ability. When Ten sings, his charm is that his voice effortlessly translates emotion and rawness. When he delivers a line, you really feel it, and that's something special. I think that this aspect of his ability is especially visible in the Nightwalker title track. You can definitely hear the difference between the naive researcher and the beautiful monster, especially joining the bridge of the song. In addition, the music video is nothing short of theatrical, with Ten acting as both the naive researcher and the alluring, beautiful monster Nightwalker character. I felt that the music video was the perfect balance of story, visuals, and dancing. I loved the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde-like concept. It's definitely one of my favorite SM soloist music videos to date. As for the remainder of the album, to put it simply, it's a 10 out of 10. Besides Nightwalker, the album features the sexy Latin pop track Water, which I find so fitting for 10. Can you please be my water? Water is a seductive track laced with acoustic guitar to give it a Latin flavor, with Ten crooning for his love interest to quote, stay my water, using the metaphor of needing a lover like the body needs water. I've always admired Ten's fluidity when he dances, so his singing a song called Water feels very ironic. Water is the perfect addition to this album, as well as a great choice to promote to showcase Ten's charm while performing. Ten the mini album also boasts the funky pop track Dangerous, which was showcased alongside Water in his performance video, once again showcasing Chasing 10's stunning vocals and flawless falsetto, while the flossy hip hop track on 10 brings the edge. Plus, closing the album, you have the RB hidden gem Shadow and Lie With Me, the heartbreaking pop anthem dedicated to bound to fail situationships. Besides Nightwalker, Shadow is my favorite track on the album. I'm a huge fan of R&B and I'm obsessed with the production of this song. The lamenting guitar riffs, Ten's longing, heartbreaking vocals of being haunted by an ex-lover, and the addictive, stuttering bass line are the highlights of the track for me. Plus, out of all the tracks on the album, Shadow is my favorite vocal performance from Ten. The track effortlessly shows his range as a vocalist and it has me hanging on every note that he sings, no matter how many times I listen to it. And it's not just diehard and citizens like myself who love this album. Overall, the Ten album has had a fantastic reception and has already achieved remarkable milestones. For example, Ten's debut album surpassed Taylor Swift on the US pop album iTunes chart, proving Ten's solo popularity in the US. But not only did Ten soar to the top of the US pop album iTunes chart, but it also secured fifth place on the overall US iTunes chart, despite competition from major artists like Usher, who was trending at the time due to his Super Bowl performance. In addition, over 140K albums were sold in the first week. Ten's Nightwalker also charted number one on Korean charts Bugs and Genie. As far as streams, Ten's Nightwalker is the biggest SM soloist debut on Spotify to date, with over 780k streams in the first day. And the album is the fifth most streamed SM solo album within the first week, with over 10 million streams as of week one. In addition, Ten began his first fan concert, a completely sold out tour this February, with several dates in Korea, Japan, China, and Thailand. Although the competition was steep and Ten did not secure any music show wins during his promotion, he did receive the Inkigayo Hot Stage for Nightwalker, nominated along 
alongside P1 Harmony and Ensign. Ten's unprecedented success on both the US and global charts, as well as his sold out fan concert tour, has only solidified Ten's status as a star in the music industry, and hopefully means that Ten will get even more opportunities to soar even higher in the next few years. So to sum things up, Ten's self-titled first mini album was well worth the wait. As a longtime fan of Ten's, it was so exciting to finally see him get the spotlight he deserves, receive love and appreciation from his fans, and not only promote his solo songs at music shows, but even perform in his own fan concert across Asia. By the way, Ten, please tour in the US. We wanna see you here too. He's an amazing multifaceted artist, a true ace and all-rounder who not only excels at dance, performance, and choreography, but has a stunning, charming voice that demands for you to listen. Personally, his album exceeded my expectations, and as I fondly remember briefly telling him at KCON High Touch last year that I could not wait for his first solo album, I look forward to watching him continue to grow and excel in his solo career. As Ten has said himself, this is just the beginning and there is more to come. His journey is far from over. The Ten album is without a doubt going to be one of my favorite albums of the year. In fact, I can safely say it's one of my favorite solo albums ever. Alongside Taemin's Ace, Want, and Guilty, Jong Hyun's She Is, Han Sung Woo's Fever, Kai's self-titled album Kai, and a few others. I think Ten is one of SM's most promising talents, and I hope they continue to support his solo endeavors. So as always, I want to know what you guys think. What do you think about Ten the first mini album? What's your favorite title track? Is Ten also one of your favorite idols? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.